Welcome to Studio 58A Live here at the Jamaica Information Service, our discussion program coming to you live on Facebook. I'm your host, Vaughn Davis. Thank you to everyone tuning in wherever you are around the world. We really do appreciate it. Thank you for your eyes. And as you watch, remember to send in your questions and your comments so we can put them to our guest. And as like how we have your attention, do us a favor now, the same favor we always ask. Share this video with a friend or two or 500 so we can have a very lively discussion now we hear the message daily <clears throat> in order for jamaica to achieve economic growth and prosperity we as a people need to become more productive it sounds good as a sound bite but how do we actually do it how do we motivate those who are content to sit on corners doing nothing to get up and involve themselves in valuable productive activity and how do we get those who are working already to push even harder to benefit themselves and the country by extension this is a question i think about at least once every week trying to find an answer luckily i have some experts in the studio with me today who can help me answer the question we have chief technical director in the jamaica productivity center miss tamar nelson and with her is Mr. Wendell Ivey, Senior Research Analyst at the Jamaica Productivity Centre. Welcome to both of you. Thank you, Vaughn. Thank All you right. for Thank having you. us. All right, so first things first, <laughs> let's just establish what exactly does the Jamaica Productivity Centre do? Well, we are the national productivity organisation here in Jamaica, mm -hmm. charged with helping Jamaica to improve its competitiveness towards um, better standard of living and sustained growth for everyone. So whether you're an individual, a company, and the nation as a whole. That's what we are here to do. All right, so give me a status update because depending on who you ask, people will say productivity is declining right. or growing. Right. You pass people on the corners and people will say, boy, look on that. That yeah. means the productivity down. But then they'll say, look at all the car centers going up. Look how much work is going on in the construction sectors. That means productivity should be up, right? So which is it? Which one is the true one? What's the situation right well, now? Well, the, the truth is that our productivity has been fluctuating over time, right? One of the, we measure productivity in various ways. Mm -hmm. So some persons would um, measure productivity as something that they feel or that they can see. Mm -hmm. And then the scientists and the economists like Wendell will have various metrics that they will use, right? So for example, GDP, our gross domestic product, right, is the value of goods and services you know, versus the amount of persons that are working mm -hmm. in our work, you know, you know, employed in the workforce. And when you look at the GDP growth rates, what you will see is that, for example, one of the things that you may have heard is that between 2013 and now, mm -hmm. that our GDP growth rates have been positive. All right, 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 right. right. So it has been ranging between 0% and 2%. Which is not great, but it's I guess not, it's better it's than, not, it's better it's not than great. nothing. It's not great, but it's positive. So that's a good sign, yeah. right? It's not where we want it to be. So for example, uh, for example um, uh, countries that we are benchmarking, mm -hmm. looking at emerging economies like India, um, Vietnam, they are looking at GDP growth rates of 5% per annum, mm -hmm. right? Um, per, you know, co countries that economies that have been more stable they are looking at three to four percent right. and then those that have been around for a very long time like japan they look at 1.5 yeah, to 2.5 I mean, percent so long, it kind of level off, it kinda levels basically. off and it just really fluctuates based on um the aging population really mm -hmm. so it means different things to different people but the fact is that we want to see higher growth that good. The going right. in the right direction <coughs> right, right, right? right and for that to happen as you rightly said everybody needs to understand it right so it, you know it's really tip of the tongue so to speak nowadays right, 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 and right. top of the mind right as you exactly. as you have indicated with your own self mm -hmm. that's something you think about once per week but um i think even when we were celebrating our World Productivity Day in Jamaica, the first ever, um, we inaugurated it a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I was having a discussion with our Japanese consultant. We have been um, very privileged to have a Japanese consultant that has been with us um, for the past 11 years. So the Japanese okay, government cool. has given us, you know, they are the leaders. Yeah, they it are comes the benchmark when it comes benchmark. to productivity. And they have been giving us technical assistance through the years. And the, our current 
Japanese consultant, Kanai, we were talking, and he said, you know, Tamar, productivity, we talk about it, and we know what it is by definition. So, you know, you see growth and output increase and all of that. But productivity, you really have to, to do it. Mm. You, have to, you have to put your hands you have and to put your shoulder to get the work done. It's an action. Right, right, It's something right. that requires action. So you can't just, we can't just be talking about it. We have to really start to, <coughs> to act on it. All and right. so we have to truly, truly, truly understand it. And that's one of the, the drivers um, or the, the thrust that our ministry has given the Productivity Center is to actually bring this message to everyone so that they can understand. So whether you are the man on the corner, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or... Which one to get there? I'm gonna ask Picky <laughs> yes. Brain about that. So we're bringing Mr. Ivy here. What's the data telling you in terms of what the, what's the, what's the situation of productivity in Jamaica? Okay. okay, so basically the thing with Jamaica is that productivity has really been decreasing over mm. the years. Nah, so that is been, where it is, right? It has been decreasing. So even if you're on Jamaica among certain Caribbean countries, like for example, you might add Trinidad in the mix mm. <laughs> because Trinidad produces a lot of things. But one thing that has, Trin Trinidad is a country that has the highest productivity in the Caribbean mm. and also in the Latin American region. Really? No, I didn't know that. Right. Yeah, so the question is, where is Jamaica on that list? So from, from a selected five, five country grouping, <coughs> we had are, are rank um, Jamaica, mm, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Lucia, Dominican Republic and Barbados. Mm. Jamaica sits in fifth position at the moment. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> but something that I have seen that is really intriguing and something that Jamaica can possibly learn a lesson from is Dominican story. Because in 2000, Dominica was the least productive country. And at 2018, Dominica has now taken second position. Yeah, okay. And what they have done is that they have focused on basically what they produce and what they export. They are not producing high value goods. So, for example, <coughs> I always try to use this analogy between Singapore and Jamaica, where Singapore produces microchips mm. and Jamaica produces banana chips. So, <laughs> the amount of banana chips that you, you have to sell to that get the value. One microchip. Exactly. It's so, that, that is where Jamaica as a country, that is where we need to be going. But right now, productivity has been declining. and. Many people, and I think one of the reasons for this is that many people don't, do not really understand what productivity is. So if you ask someone the question, what is productivity, just out of the blues, they might give you a definition that would tell you that this is actually production that they are talking about. Mm. So production is basically the output or the amount that you actually produce, but productivity is how efficiently <coughs> you use the inputs to make the outputs. All right. So you mentioned high value goods and, and uh, so the question then is what are some other what should we in your opinion should we pos we be position our, positioning ourselves towards you know what <coughs> are some of the industries that we can translate into that more that increased productivity or, the, or high value productivity then? okay one, one, one of the things i've been looking at is the amount of research and development that we do if we invest more in research and development then then we can become a bit more innovative and with that innovation we can come up with more new products that might be of high value for example if you look at the mining sector what is produced or mined in that sector is really high valued so you might not have a lot of workers in the sector but the output is of a very high value and it's direction like that we need to be going as a country All right. yes, yes. so i know that one of the things that the jamaica Productiv productivity center does is they work with different companies and <coughs> so on to help them to find and identify ways in which them can move past um right. any things that might be hindering their ability exactly. to produce and, right. and be more productive so talk to me about that and how do you work with them to make that happen okay we have a technical assistance services unit mm -hmm. and we that unit is charged with helping such companies. So companies will approach us. And when it comes to productivity, you have you know, so many factors that can affect productivity. So what we do, we go in, audit what is happening, and really guide the company as to where the gaps are based on our analysis mm -hmm. and what can be done to improve. And you know, some of the things that we have seen often throughout um, the, our interventions is one that as a country, we don't like to measure, mm. right? 
And if we are measuring, we don't like to share those met metrics with persons. Like a silo situation where I work doing things one way and this next person don't have any exactly, idea why. Exactly. Do. Or the information isn't shared with the entire workforce. Mm -hmm. So it's only a few persons in the company possibly would know what is happening, you know, or, or they don't have the time to be measuring. Mm -hmm. So we find various reasons or kind of we work with them. And another thing that we do is we partner with organize other organizations to <coughs> reach as many companies as possible. Because as you can imagine, you know, we are an organization of about 10 persons at present, mm -hmm. you know, and we're looking at increasing Jamaica's productivity. Yeah. So partnerships are at the core of whatever we are doing, collaboration. So right now, for example, the team, as a team, we are collaborating with Jampro, looking at 50 export-ready firms mm -hmm. to improve their productivity over the next three years, right? Um, our minister has also charged us with having a focus on public sector agencies in terms of improving their definitely, definitely. efficiency and effectiveness. And, you know, when we talk about productivity, and I went and touched up on it a little bit, but... Um, the definition is often misunderstood, mm. right? So what's the difference? What's the, I mean, to make, to, there are, to make it clear for those there who are, are many, There are many different definitions. One is output over input, mm -hmm. right? So if you understand that formula, to increase productivity, you have to increase either the value or the, the number of the output and keep the bottom part, the, numer the denominator constant, mm -hmm. right? Or grow the output at a faster rate than okay. the inputs, right? right? So it's always looking at how efficient and how effectively we do what we do, uh, or doing the right things the right way. All right. And in doing that, <laughs> you know, I was doing some reading the other day, and one, one book said, you know, that doing the right things the right way takes a lot of courage. And also, you know, you're giving up convenience. Yeah, that's true. It's not <laughs> easy. It's not easy to do things the it right way. It won't be easy. Especially when you have a culture, a workplace culture, where they've just been doing things this exactly. way from what you fill up, right. so you know it already. And in walking into JIS, I noticed that you have a system of continuous improvement yeah, here. Yeah, right. undergoing on ISO 9000 right, upgrade, right. right? So we're making the effort to yeah, see yes. if we can put ourselves and on I the international benchmark. Very good. And, right. and that's commendable to All you right. and the team. And I see uh, you have a plan, do, check, act, yeah, quality yeah, yeah, system it's going it's a, on. It's a very so intuitive <laughs> system, very, very serious and intensive. But that's just, the agency is going to be much, much better off for it. Awesome. Now, let me ask you this. One of the things I, um, in terms of things that are barriers to productivity, you mentioned the fact that we don't like to measure. So, mm -hmm. I mean, a company will, for example, be producing mm -hmm. bag juice, but you don't know, for <laughs> example, how many bag juice they produce per week or right, how they, right, you don't have right. the data yes. to do. But one of the things I'm asking about is red tape. Mm -hmm. How does that impact productivity in a company or in a business or anything like that? Well, it, <laughs> if you're talking about efficiency, we have mm -hmm. to get it right the first time mm -hmm. and we have to do it as quickly as possible. So we don't want to be taking a long time. So for example, um, our, you know, you go to a hardware store to to get paint, for mm -hmm. example. When you go, all you need to, to do is to pay and to get the paint. But when you go to the hardware, it's not as simple as that. Mm -hmm. They have to pass it to somebody who checks, double checks, somebody else has to sign it. So you're standing waiting for an hour, half an hour to get your, your product, your your product goods, whatever, and right? Because of internal <laughs> issues mm -hmm. that haven't been um, rectified. But the customer is not interested in that. And if we're talking productivity, we have to think from our customer's perspective and know Definitely. who we're serving and that they want high quality product in the shortest time at the best cost, All right. right? So, so we yeah. always have to be thinking about that when as, as organizations, as businesses to, to um, you know, not do what's convenient for us, but what would the customer need and to think about that and to, build the system as efficiently as possible to serve those customers. So whether right. you're private or you're public, that should always be the aim. Right. We have some people beginning up on a business. A lot of them seem to have your last name, so it's not like your family is <laughs> watching. Appreciate that, really appreciate that. <laughs> One question from Candice Christine, she start asking about the work day, and I suppose that into the flexi work week. We'll get to that. I don't right. really touch that yet. I just want to bring Mr. Ivy back in and ask you in terms of 
the actual private sector, the, well, both private and public sector in Jamaica, what's the information telling you or the data telling you in terms of what are some of the sectors that are showing good levels of productivity relative to those who are not necessarily doing so well? Okay, so the financial intermediation is very productive. I mm. think they are, they, are, they are not, I don't think, they are ranked um, highly up there mm. among the, the, the essential services of electricity, gas and water. But financial intermediation, uh, the banking sector, those are really productive. Mm. And we can agree because th those in those sectors are very competitive. So those people tend to get the latest technology and try to make their process exactly. as efficient as possible. Everybody's lending money, everybody's trying to get you through their door, so they're exactly. working hard. So they're working hard. And as I said, one of the lowest or the least productive sectors our industry, their industries really, it, it, it comes back to um, the government. Mm, okay. the, the government sector, it is one of the um, least efficient sectors. And I think one of the things that we can do to improve a sector like that is the level of bureaucracy in it to do certain processes. Mm. Those will actually help to drive up the productivity, as you just mentioned just mm -hmm. now. The red tape mm -hmm. situation. Right. Yeah. So, so those are things that has been impeding. Right. And the thing, the thing is that Things can be done a, a bit easier or quicker, but certain things tend to lag a bit and those things actually in yeah, the productivity. productivity. Right. And as a centre, we have been doing yeah. a, a, a lot of those efficiency studies within our own ministry, looking at the time to deliver um, these goods and services to the customer and mm -hmm. um, looking to shorten that timeline. And we have had several successes, um, you know, and now we are seeing where they have been implementing and also looking at the technological aspect and mm, using that mm. platform so that persons will be able to now do a lot of the applications for these services from home. Right, and online not and things like exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. And we, have having a, we, are, we have been having a number of those requests recently. Right, so Another interesting thing to note is that you have the goods producing sector and you have the service producing sector. The service producing sector is way more efficient or the productivity that comes out is higher than what that is of the good producing sector. So I think there can be, to improve productivity, I had asked myself a question in, I thought that, okay then, do we need to improve the goods producing sector mm -hmm. or do we need to improve the service producing sector? The service producing sector is 2.5 times more productive than the goods producing sector. So that question has to come into play. What mm -hmm. do we do? Do we try to improve both? Do we are focus on one, one in particular, particular or something like that? But then there can be some linkages between the two. Because you have the agricultural sector, what is being produced in the agricultural sector could be feed into the service producing sector, where you have the hotels, the restaurants and stuff like those. So linkages and those things play a vital role in actually trying to But what of agriculture? Because agriculture can, has consistently been one of the most, I guess, productive, well, best produced, are uh, producing the most, are growth, it's growing the most in, in past couple of, well, the past couple of quarters, mm -hmm. you see the agriculture sector is growing pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yet many people would tell you that why, even though it's productive, it's not necessarily, it could be much more productive considering you have people using hand and, you know, as opposed to mechanization exactly. of machines and better equipment and exactly. technology and so So what are the lessons that could be learned from maybe that sector and what they're doing? So the thing is with agriculture is that we, as a country, we need to move to more, as I said, more high-valued stuff. Yeah. So like agriculture is typically takes most of the labor. In the in workforce, agriculture is the sector mm -hmm. that actually takes up a larger percentage of the, the workforce. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. with that, we have many people working, but they are producing a low value out oh, okay. output. Okay. For example, if you look at, so let's look at BPO now, because that is a topic. Right, right, right. So the BPO sector now, it, it is employing a lot of persons, right? But if the amount of person that is being employed or the percentage, if the growth in the employed labor force today BPO sector is greater than the value of the output that, is, that they are putting out, then you'll have problems. Productivity mm. will fall. Makes sense. Absolutely. But, but then you can also argue that if the more people you employ, because you know we have a lot of people in Jamaica that are unemployed, even though you see that the unemployment rate has, has um, decreased. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that you can actually improve GDP by employing those persons because toward the GDP formula is composed, consumption is a component. So if you hold everything else constant in the GDP formula, so in the GDP formula, you have consumption, investment, you have the exports, you have government spending, net exports. 
So now, if you hold everything as constant, and you just have the consumption portion now, when you employ those persons into mm-hmm. the BPO sector, now you're giving people an income who didn't have any. Mm-hmm. Of course. So now, they will now have some money to consume, and that consumption now will we'll then stimulate the, the GDP. Right. But right. we're talking about productivity. But you also right. raised a very important point in terms of the, the kind of tooling that we have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we have to also look at that, whether it's in manufacturing, that supports the agricultural sector, and also the agricultural sector to look at the technology being used to improve on that, to increase the yield, and also the quality of mm-hmm. the products. And well, adding value to, to the raw materials that we have will also increase you know, the, 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 the output that we, and the value right, that right, we right. So with the agricultural sector now, say, we improve the type of technology that we use that will force out some of the labor out there you know but mm-hmm. this is not to, to me uh-huh. this is not necessarily a bad thing no. this is a good thing because what you do now will force people to upgrade their skill set to, to, to meet the demand of that but sector but then we'll tell you we'll force them to go sit down back from the corner no, hold no. them jack and, and say boy you know them take of work where, so may i go do now you know that's where I mean? the growth comes in so people always mix up productivity with losing jobs so persons are afraid of being more productive because they're going to be they're going to lose their job mm. but it actually opens up avenue for other things so for example i remember one um client uh, government service that cli- um, client that we worked with when we showed them that based on the technology they would need this department or the skills aren't required there, what they did was redeploy those persons to other areas of greater need, Mm -hmm. right? Um, When I did some trading in Japan, what they did was when they got more efficient and they didn't need the skill set there, they started a new line or a new product line with the other persons, right? Or utilized or upskilled or or trained. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we need to also look at in terms upskilling. of upskilling especially I mean, I think yeah, people are afraid of losing right. their work or losing their stream right, of income right. or their or the situation because if you, i mean i yeah. mean you can't expect them to be a little bit afraid still i mean you would if you hear that your work is now obsolete and no so the first thing you think is like so mega home i go pay my bills home i go do that but that that <laughs> culture of upskilling yes. how do you see that taking root in jamaica well it's something that we will have to do because i think one report that i read from the world economic forum is that 42 percent of the skills of today's jobs and skills by 2022 will no longer be required mm. Right, uh, and that's where the world is going. Forty-two percent. That's a very that's a holy holy part. Forty-two percent is not a small <laughs> no, amount. No, it's not a it? small amount. So yeah, we yeah, really yeah. have to start to look at 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 um, the workforce and the skill sets, and making sure that we have the right match for skills and jobs. Because again, going out into the field, what we see is persons having the technology and the capacity, and not having the the the, 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 the skill sets readily mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right to to take off as they would like or to, to right. maximize that capacity let me just check in with some people online to, uh, those who are lending us there as i really appreciate them erica debbie gordon says very informative very informa- informative programs from jazz thank you erica appreciate that tamar nelson <laughs> that sounds like my daughter yeah, all right. Ruel <laughs> nelson um candice christina she asked are there are there ongoing talks addressing the hours in a regular work day eight hours and more often negatively impacts productivity levels which you know brings us to the topic of the flexi work week which right. was a big topic of discussion even a couple of years ago but it yes. seems to have just kind of interest as we know right. but that's something that everybody generally agrees that based everybody has different living circumstances and so that trying to true. force feed everybody into this eight hours a day situation might not be the <coughs> best so what what's your take on that and uh, whether or not it would benefit jamaica's productivity absolutely and that's an ongoing discussion with us at the center up to recently we were talking about the same thing and saying that right now we have different generations who who work differently mm-hmm. and and um, we have to the strict nine to five may not be as productive as we <laughs> move further right, on down right, the timeline right, right. so we have to think creatively and look at um, the workforce that we have and who we are dealing with and try to to probably find a mix that would work or a blend that works well and I uh, you know there are companies in Jamaica that have been employing various <coughs> techniques. Um, some persons, I think when they were talking about one company that has 
um, a certain number of days that you can stay home and work from home. So apart from sick days and, and, and departments mm -hmm. and leave and vacation, you have work at home days. I think that's very creative. Mm -hmm. Within our ministry, we had, when, um, with the traffic situation, they had a, um, different times <coughs> where persons could come in and up to come in based on where they live and their own circumstances. So there are things that we can do. There are no and low cost ways. And again, it's good when you can measure to ensure that you're, and you know, track what track you're doing on, yeah. so that you get the, the maximum benefit right. from and these to add a point to that, I think a very good example to look at is Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. For the persons who are interested in that type of flexi work week, Luxembourg is one of the most productive countries in the world and they work on average 28, 28 hours per week instead of the 40. So what they do... <laughs> yeah, yes, you can tell that to um, <laughs> the high ups make them no, understand No, but I'm saying, I'm, saying for the person, I'm saying for the person who wanted to know a little bit more about like right. that type of startup stuff, you could look at Luxembourg because what Lu Luxembourg does is that they take into account the personal lives of their staff or the people in the country, the government thing. So people are, because you might be at work and you want to rush go on the road to do something for yourself, but your job doesn't, doesn't allow you to do that. Definitely. So you'll have to wait till next week or next month and it just has to pass because you have work to do and if you don't come to work then they don't get paid. <coughs> but in Luxembourg what they do, they factor those personal stuff into the time that the workers actually work. All right, so another question, one from, uh, well, thank you, Ricardo Porsche's uh, top fan. Good afternoon, Mr. Porsche's. Really appreciate uh, your eyes as usual. And Valentino Roshan Anderson, who has a good question here. He's asking, how soon will the contract system come out of the workforce system? And I mean, it, as much as that might be, a, that it might not seem related, but it is in the sense that for many persons, you might feel like, okay, I only have X amount, I don't get benefits, I don't get this, I don't get that, so why right. should I give you my productivity, my extra productivity when I don't, when, you know, I'm barely even employed, so to speak. You know what I mean? Yes, and, so and there's, you, you know, there's, a, take on that? there's a bigger approach, and, and, and I get the point, and I've heard the cries, many of them. Um, but as it relates to productivity, the tagline that for JPC is it, it's everybody's business, mm -hmm. right? So um, it's something that requires the movement or the, 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 the input of everyone in society to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So if, if one person is productive and the, the rest is not so productive, <laughs> it, it right? bring, that brings down everybody. It brings down everybody, right? Mm -hmm. But what we need to do, and, and um, you know, I see some companies, they, they would have employee of the month and they have that person there and they get an award and okay. their picture is up, uh, you know, there's another school of thought that you know everybody else is there but when you look at that person that person isn't brighter than anybody else or or has a higher degree or anything like that but what what is different about that person is how how they approach what they do right, so and it's more like incentive schemes to kind of beef up whatever that exactly, they might not be getting exactly so so to link productivity and you know to performance and your wages to that performance right so productivity linked wage systems that would help and also when that person you know they yeah, would call it the outlier mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. that person the outlier so, and everybody else is average but what what makes them different what did they do that the others can do All right. so it's to study that and make that a new standard the new norm and raise the bar so to speak so that everybody is now up and then there is a new normal <laughs> or a uh, new average. I see, I hear what you're saying. Yes. Now, does your work take into, because I mean, when we think of productivity, I often tend to think of people in offices, in companies like this. Uh, but does, do your, does your work take into consideration, for example, the vendor who sells for eight hours on the street, juggling in your bag juice, soda, whatever the case may be. Do those persons factor into the, the productivity discussion? Because as much as, you know, for every one person you might see right. on a corner, though, there are those who are working some bad 10, 15 hour days. Yes, yes. And, and they are productive, <laughs> even as much as you might say is low value right. yeah, money, money, contributions, money. but still the productivity is yes, there. You yes, know what yes, I mean? Yes. How do you reconcile that? Right, and, and that's why we have our public education campaign that is targeting not only, we say persons in offices or manufacturing firms, but 
everybody contributes towards productivity. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for that man on the street to understand that his contribution is valuable and it is counted, mm -hmm. right? So even if, you know, Martin Luther King said, if you're sweeping the streets, make it be that when you die, you're mm -hmm. here lives the best sweet street sweeper who ever lived, right? So everybody, you know, just doing what you do to the best of your ability mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and as efficiently as possible. You know, in Jamaica, we always say, we're going to try a thing. Yeah, that's true. But <laughs> you know, we're going to try a thing. Yeah, but, you know, there, there is a lot behind that that can be done to, to say, well, um, let us just try, but try and, and, and do it to the best that that I can. All right. So tell me what the data insofar as when you <coughs> analyze that con that the contribution of that those persons within society. What does okay, that tell so you? Did it, did all, all productivity really benefits those type of people because I've looked at minimum wage before and the quality of life, minimum wage and the quality of life. And it tells you that minimum wage alone is not sufficient for those people. Definitely. And you have, you have a lot of Jamaicans living on minimum wage. So that's what's something I was passionate about. But the key to solving that question is really to improve productivity because what happens when you improve productivity on a national level is that your real wage rises. And every year we have a situation where you hear, okay, then minimum wage we got 20,000, mm. 10,000. And I'm saying that. You might give people more money, but producers might actually pass on because labor is an input in the production and process. So if you give people more money now, then those employers will actually try to recoup back that money. So what will happen is that they might pass it on back to the same consumers mm -hmm. who got the raise, but the price level inflation might be higher than mm -hmm. the, what they get for their, their wage. So last, um, last month, Somebody could buy a tent in a mackerel, but this month they only can buy one. Exactly. But they have a higher um, nominal wage. Them get 10,000 now. Mm -hmm. So what happens when productivity increases is that your real wage increase. So now you have $7,000 or, or you might have $7,000 now, but that $7,000 can do a lot more than what probably 8000 could have done. Mm -hmm. So that is how the little man is really feed into so this. I mean, but I mean, it's kind of hard to make a man appreciate that. You're basically tell him to work harder, for, for maybe he might get an increase in their personal wage. How does that, no, man. how am I going to see that? How is that translating to him in his mind that, okay, if I work harder, because for example, it might be that I did myself, for arguments, I used to sell myself 10 juice yesterday, I'm going to try to sell 15 today. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it might translate into better um, in an increased profit right. for mm -hmm. that day or that week or whatever the case may be but then in terms of seeing me having a real wage in increase what no, you just I don't believe him that, like, <laughs> almost sounds like he's like yeah I don't believe you Virgin that sounds like pie in the sky to me you know mm -hmm. what I mean it's not, it's not pie in the sky man it's just the, the, the real wage and, right. and, and inflation so you're, you're actually beating inflation so now your ten thousand dollars were more than it was yesterday mm -hmm. because of improve, improved productivity overall in the whole economy and that is what we have not been seeing over the years so every year now you go to the wholesale and the year say okay then last year we just buy my grocery for 15000 but this year we buy the same thing and it mm -hmm. costs 20000 exactly. that is because productivity has been going down so mm -hmm. see then you're paying more money but what could have if productivity was on the other other end now in, increasing then know that 15 thousand now could probably give you more items and you, you went home with 20 items so this month now you're going home with 30 items with the same value that you spent last week right. or last month yeah, so that is there. how it actually helps all right so mr ivy just give you a real economic factual data as to why you need to step it up at work and learn you know don't just um sit down and just wait and just complain to the boss now pay you know if you put in the work okay for it example will translate right for so, example look at look at dominican republic mm -hmm. this is close to home Dominican Republic economy has been growing rapidly mm -hmm. due to improved productivity over the, year, or, or, over the last couple of years. They are, they are actually the fastest growing country in Latin America, mm -hmm. Dominican Republic, and it is through in, increased productivity. They are basically changed what they export, like, for example, they are now exporting some medical stuff and stuff like that, some more high value goods so that translate mm -hmm. overall to the right. economy. So even though the man from the government might not really understand what productivity is, but it actually helps to increase his real wage once the economy start goes into that, that direction. So we might be hearing that, okay, then the economy has grown from 20, grown positively over the, for the last couple of years or quarters, but yet still people, the little man, still find it harder than it was before. Mm -hmm. So it is because productivity hasn't been increasing, mm -hmm. but, it, but GDP has been growing. And GDP is a component in the productivity formula, the value mm -hmm. of the GDP. It is the output, but this is the input now. So it, it, we are being less productive, but the value 
of the GDP is increasing. Mm. Right, so. so what a, a, a man on the street would, would do um, when it comes to productivity, you would more feel it, mm -hmm. you know? So as you, you, I think in your opening comments, you, you know, you will see, oh, there's a lot of construction happening. Right. That means that, that means things that should are mean happening. should more people are earning, right? right? That's uh, not or, you know, the road structure is being improved. That means, well, we, we, our goods would be going faster. Mm -hmm. I can get to so and so to sell my goods quicker and come back home. And mm -hmm. so it's it's increased standard of living. You know, I may get through at this government agency a lot quicker. And so, you know, uh, the customer experience increase and, you know, their standard of living increases. When they go to buy goods, they can buy more with the same amount of mm -hmm. money. You know, that, and it's, Everyone benefits when that happens. Yeah, but th that is also a positive for the country, though. You can see these things happening, which means that the country is, on a, is setting up itself for in increased productivity. Yeah. If you look at, um, like, for example, I, I look at this educational index that we had, and you can see that from around 2010, there about the returns to going to, going to school has started to increase. It's on the, it, positive right now so we can expect that in a couple of years you now with all these transformation that is actually taking place mm -hmm. then productive will start to increase and then we'll we, we'll be on a positive tra trajectory as it relates right. to productivity growth so the ground work is being done let me run in some quick, quick questions coming in online um <laughs> let me save that one for last <laughs> you know, and <they> look <laughs> touchy um one of the fiona walford thank you fiona for your question she's one of the issues we face in the workplace is superiors do not focus on production or staff well-being they more focus getting workers out of their job this type of attitude leads to lack of production because workers feel they can go at any time so why put in the work that's just like it, it comes back wow. to the issue of work um staff appreciation and mm -hmm. yes. you might feel like yes. you, you, you know you don't have the the the, the tenure Right. To stay a stick around and so on. And, and that goes to one factor that we have looked at in terms of productivity and that affects productivity is worker engagement. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, some of the worldwide statistics in the U.S., they have an average of 30 percent engagement at work. In Germany, 16 percent, <coughs> mm -hmm. which and the worldwide average is 13 percent. Now, those numbers are crazy. Mm -hmm. That means it's not just Jamaica, it's a worldwide problem that we face. And the average cost to an organization when you have disengaged employees is about 35% of their salary, mm -hmm. which is a lot, right? So it is in the company's best interest then to ensure that um, persons are are positive, they are contributing. The, the employers are the staff, the main administrative persons. Exactly, right? exactly. It, it, it's, a, it's something to pay attention to because it actually could be lo losing productivity <laughs> in right. that sense. <laughs> so you're not getting the maximum <laughs> input. You say you have people on the work using your Wi-Fi to look for new jobs. Basically. Right, and, and I mean, that's also another problem where, where um, disengaged persons utilize social media a lot more at work. Mm -hmm. So you have the, the pinging effect. So every minute you hear a ping and they're down in a meeting and they're on their phone most of the time responding to it. You have organizations now in Jamaica that it's it's actually banned. You, you can't have, have your phone, your phone yeah. any at all, right? Because of <laughs> Which what's Some people might say is a way for disengage your employees, but you know. Yes, then I yes. Can, what right. I mean, so it, it varies. So actually we are partnering with a research team at the Hugh Lawson Sherrod Trade Union Educational Institute looking at the social media aspect in Jamaica. So that should be an interesting it study. Should, it's yeah. going to be something. So All right. Let me take another, for that. take another question from Latasha Fleming. She says, I think the first step should be sensitizing the public on what productivity is and yeah. ways to become productive. So mm -hmm. any public re public education campaigns, any work like that, that the Productivity Center is undertaking? Ex we do, we do. We have... Um, or be productive campaign. We have that. We have our productivity clubs in schools mm -hmm. that we uh, have launched. So we have one so far in Immaculate. We also have at our World Productivity Day on June twentieth, we pinned some of our ambassadors, and we also invited other persons to come on board. Mm -hmm. So these ambassadors will be using their their voice, their platforms you know, to help to spread the productivity message um, to a lot further so it can go into every nook and cranny in Jamaica because this thing really needs a movement for us to get the, the, need, the, the, <laughs> the productivity needle in the right direction. And, um, you know, what we are 
inviting is you know persons you know we always talk about the negative trends but we want to look at the more positive aspect of productivity to acknowledge the companies and the individuals that are pro productivity what those initiatives are so mm -hmm. we're encouraging persons to share that information with us so we can you know so persons can see that, that it's not something it's not something so that is far-fetched or hard to do and most of the times we have what we need to be successful so All it's right. just to, to get that done so um you know persons can contact us on our on our website and um on, right. and and I put contact us. with you. I'm going to chat, but this question from Valentino Roshane Anderson again. It seems like he has a particular issue with you <laughs> and your um, approach of working harder to be more productive. He says, I'd rather go home, go to farm, and I sell bag juice more than work harder. So it's all like he's not appreciating. <laughs> he's not appreciating the need, in, based on what you're saying, to be more productive, to translate into increased earnings and better well-being for himself. So so, I want you to just go back over it again in terms of what's the value of increasing your productivity as an individual and how that will translate into benefit for you and your life. Okay. When I was speaking about the productivity overall, I was speaking about in the economy in general, mm -hmm. but individually increasing your productivity, it can be beneficial to you because it isn't you know, just about like money. For example, I can give you a personal example from my own experience in which when I was going to university, um, I, had, I was offered a job at a well-paid um, institution, right? And I was thinking to myself, I should, should I take this job or should I basically try to do further studies? And at that time, I had two options. I had to take a lower-paying job to learn some skills versus a higher paying job where I, I don't know where the skills would have been. But what I did was I, I declined the well-paid job and I did the lit, for little or nothing just to learn skills. And over time that has transitioned and helped me to become a more productive person because I have learned certain skills in which when I look at certain people, um, but then those, those skills actually, actually helped me to learn jobs that are very good, mm. are, are helped me to develop personally. And if, yeah. if, I, if I might add to sure. Vaughan's question, to what Wendell has said to Vaughan's question, is it's not only about, it's not just about working harder, it's working smarter. Mm. Right. And when you work smarter, it, it helps you as, as, you say, in, as individuals as well. So, you know, just going back to my Japan experience, um, as, as workers, you had, um, you were given the autonomy and the authority to make improvements to your own work situation, right? So if something, if this chair didn't suit me, I could make modifications to it. And I was given that authority to do so, mm -hmm. to ensure that it works for me. Because when it suits me, or, or you know, I am more efficient, I am less stressed, I am more happier, and therefore I'm more productive. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then when you know that you're contributing you know, um, in a positive way, and you can see the output. It builds your own morale, and you know, the engagement improves as well. Mm -hmm. So you'd find that in in a lot of the firms that we had studied um, during that time, they didn't have outside consultants coming in to tell them what to do because everybody was empowered to say, mm -hmm. "Okay, look at your system and see how can it be improved. What would you need to improve it." And they were given whatever tools to or equipment make or the changes to make, make the changes. Work. And right. everybody benefited. All right, I think we've discussed a lot of things here today. And I might just have to have a part two so we can look at some of the other issues because we're running well a little bit over our time. But I'm going to just give you the last word, Ms. Nelson, in terms of just to let persons know what's going on at Jamaica Productivity Centre and how they can make contact with you and partner up and so that they can help play their part in increasing productivity in Jamaica. Okay, well, at the Productivity Centre, well, then the big initiative that we're working on right now is a national productivity policy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have our research team that is engaged with that. We have also gotten support from the Japanese government. I want to tell them thank you for our policy analysts to join our team. And over the next year and a half or so, we'll be pulling information through different fora and putting this policy together to really look at the gaps, not to duplicate what's happening, but to, uh, to look what is happening in the world, what we can benefit from um, to, to actually get it going. Mm -hmm. So it, it would span all sectors, uh, across Jamaica. That's number one. 
Um, we're also looking at partnering with various institutions. So we have, I spoke of the JAMPRO Export Max 3 program. So mm -hmm. we are on our third program with JAMPRO. We also will be partnering with um, the Salesis Institute at the University of the West Indies, looking at the whole um, labor market and if we are ready for the fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. So we have a pre-forum um, with the youths that would All feed right. into the national forum. So you'll hear more about those coming up. Um, so please stay in contact with us to hear what's happening there. And right. we'll also continue with our, our technical initiatives um, to help companies, public and private, to improve their productivity. All right. They Wonderful. can contact us at... Look in the camera and let them know. Where they can <laughs> you can <laughs> contact us at 922-1598 or our website at www.jpc.mlss.gov.jm. Um, All right, there you have it. So that's the Jamaica Productivity Center. We want you to get as productive as possible, not just from an academic standpoint, not just because it sounds like a good thing to do to be productive for Jamaica. It actually has tangible realistic benefits for the country. The country will improve its whole economic situation, which will just translate into better, better financial and social and so many other things, you know, all across the board. So it's, uh, it's in all of our best interest to increase our individual productivity. And with that said, it's time for us to wrap. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned into our discussion. We really do appreciate it, especially those of you who sent in questions and your comments. And if you sent in a question that we didn't get to answer it, not to worry, we'll go back through. And if there's anything we can't answer, we'll send it on to Miss Nelson and Mr. Ivy so that they can give you the right information. Remember, our audience plays a major part in our show. So if there's anyone you'd like for us to have in the studio, let us know. And we'll try our best to have that person in the studio as soon as possible. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, and Instagram. Just look for Jamaica Information Service. We're everywhere. <coughs> and look for Jamaica Productivity Center. I'll just give you guys a plug. Yeah, I'm sure you're on social media <laughs> as well, right? Just yeah. you can look them up, find them. It shouldn't be a problem. You find, Learn all about productivity and getting yourself involved in the thrust to make Jamaica a more productive country. We do this every Thursday live on Facebook. I've been your host, Vaughn Davis, and this has been Studio 58A Live. Thank you again for joining us, and please have a wonderful day.